What is this all about? Uh, this is about uh, are we going to be guided uh, by decades of science uh, from thousands of respected scientists uh, or not? Uh, this is about are we going to, uh, to seize the opportunity uh, that's inherent in the adversity we face, the challenges that we face at home and around the world or not? This is about are we going to get serious about ending our addiction to, uh, to oil, a lot of which here in our country is in uh, places uh, like the Gulf of Mexico and some of it thousands of feet below the surface of the water or not. This is about are we going to stop sending literally tens, maybe hundreds of billions of our dollars every year to, uh, to places around the world that are unstable, uh, non-democratic, uh, propping up tyrants uh, like uh, tyrants who lead countries like Iran and like Venezuela or not. This is about are we going to continue sending troops to places like Iraq or, or other places around the world where we happen to have a lot of oil and we want to make sure that, uh, that there's access to, to that oil or not. And this is about uh, whether or not we're going to jumpstart our economy at a time in our nation's history when literally millions of young people are graduating from colleges and universities, graduating from high schools, wondering if they're going to have uh, the kind of opportunity to find a job and provide for themselves and their families someday to provide a good life, better than one that uh, they have inherited from their parents. That is what this is about. Now we have heard, I have heard, and I know my colleagues have heard, literally from hundreds, thousands of scientists from all over this country uh, to, uh, to give us... Uh, give us their uh, advice. And what are they telling us? Among the things that they're telling us is that uh, the Earth is growing warmer. They're telling us that we are part of the cause. They are telling us to do something about it. They are saying to us, if we won't do something about it, at least let EPA do the job that they've been told by the Supreme Court that they've got to do under the Clean Air Act. And among the things that they've got to do under the Clean Air Act is uh, to, as Senator Feinstein alluded to, provide for ratcheting up the fuel efficiencies of our cars, trucks, and vans up to about 34 miles per gallon by 2016. The effect of doing that will take something like 50 million cars, trucks, and vans off the road by 2030. That's the kind of thing EPA needs to do if we will let them. Who are the, uh, the scientists that we're hearing from? Who are they? I don't know them all. We've heard from a couple of thousand. I know a couple of them real well, though. And uh, their names are uh, Lonnie and uh, Ellen Thompson. The professors at, the U, uh, at Ohio State University, my undergraduate alma mater, and uh, they spent a lot of the last uh, 20, 25 years running something called the, uh, the Polar, uh, Polar Research Center at Ohio State. They've also spent a lot of the last 25 years going around the world, climbing up uh, some of the tallest mountains in the world, a lot of them along the equator, where the snow caps uh, give them the opportunity to take ice core samples. And the, uh, those snow caps over time have actually begun to disappear largely disappear. But the ice core samples that they still have frozen on the campus of Ohio State University give us an opportunity to go back in time, and as we go back in time, to look back as much as a, hundred, a million years. To look back a million years, and what do we see then? We see over that million years different levels of carbon in our air. Sometimes it's high, and sometimes it's low. They have correlated, Drs. Thompson, doctor, I call them the Thompson twins, but Dr. Doctor, Dr. and Dr. Thompson have actually correlated the increases in carbon with increases in temperature over time, the decreases in carbon in the atmosphere with the decreases in, in temperature. They are correlated. They're positively correlated. And uh, the, uh, the, 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 the doctor and uh, Dr. Thompson say, we ought to do something about it. We ought to act on that science. And, and I believe they're absolutely right. They also, uh, we've also heard from our scientists around the country that the 10 hottest years uh, in all the years we've been around is a country keeping records, 10 of the, the, the 10 hottest years of the last 20 years, within the last 20 years. And in an effort to compel our government to take action, all kinds of campaigns have been launched. I, I heard one of them here from, uh, I think, Senator Feinstein, talking about drought. Uh, fertile farmland turns into to desert. Polar bears don't have ice to float on. Uh, we see endangered species uh, disappear. Movies are made about the extreme uh, weather that's going to flow out of, uh, out of climate uh, change. I'm going to leave it to other people to pursue those particular uh, uh, agendas or, or examples. I want to focus on a couple that I'm more familiar with. One is Delaware, where I live, and the other is Florida, where my parents lived for the last 30 years of, of, of their life. This is Delaware, outlined here in, uh, in black. And if the, uh, the melting that's going on in the uh, Greenland and West Antar uh, Ant Antarctic ice sheets continue, and it'll continue over the next 100 years or, or more, this will no longer be Delaware. 
The green area right here will be Delaware. People won't go to Ro uh, Rehoboth Beach to the, to, the, to, the, to the beach anymore, or Bethany Beach or Dewey Beach. They'll be looking for a beach up here in, uh, in Dover. Uh, they won't be going to uh, NASCAR races in Dover, uh, like they did a couple of weeks ago. They'll be going to sailboat regattas in Dover. That's where we'll be. Ocean View down here, which doesn't, has an, uh, doesn't have an ocean view, will be under the ocean. They won't have a view of the ocean. They'll be under the ocean. And how about Florida? Let's take a, a look at Florida. We're going to look at Florida if there's one meter rise in, uh, in sea level. And we're going to look at uh, Florida with, with uh, about uh, a six meter rise. There, my parents lived in uh, Clearwater, just, uh, just around here on St. Peter's Berg uh, uh, in Tampa. Uh, the place where they uh, used to live, largely underwater. Largely underwater. They lived about a half mile from the Gulf. Pretty much underwater. Look down here at South Florida. So, go to South Beach uh, when we have a meter of, of sea rise. You won't find it. It'll be underwater. Let's look at six meters. What happens with six meters of sea rise? The red part here is the parts of Florida that are basically underwater. Most of the people who live in Florida live in the parts here that are in red. Where are they going to live? Well, they can, I guess, come in a little bit, but they sure won't be living in the area that turned red because they would otherwise be underwater. There's a saying that all politics is local, and that's been true for a long time, and it's still true for a long time. The highest point of land in Delaware is a bridge. And uh, when we get a couple of uh, feet, uh, feet of uh, sea level rise, our, uh, the, the outline of our state changes dramatically. And the quality of life in a state that's underwater changes dramatically as, as well. The same is true of Florida and a bunch of other or coastal states. What do we need to do? What we need to do is uh, unleash market forces. What we need to do is put millions of people to work doing what? Building new nuclear power plants, finding ways to take uh, carbon dioxide coming off of coal fired plants, turn it into concrete ag aggregate that we can use to build roads, highways, bridges in this country, to build buildings in this country, to take the CO2 coming off of coal fired plants and turn it into biofuels. What do we need to do? We need to deploy off of our shores, off of Rehoboth Beach, windmill farms. We need to deploy windmill farms from North Carolina, where our presiding officers from, all the way up to Maine. We need to take that, uh, that electricity that we're generating from the wind and use that to power vehicles like the Chevrolet Volt that's going to be launched this fall. Like the Fisker Karma and Nina, they're going to be launched in, uh, in a year or so, built in, in, in Delaware. They get 100 miles per gallon. What do we need to do? We need to make sure that uh, the cars, trucks, and vans that GM and Chrysler are prepared to build, 44 miles per gallon, that when they build them, somebody will be there to buy them. I'm going to close with the words of a friend of, a friend of Senator Boxer, eminent climatologist Stephen Stills. Stephen Stills used to say, used to say, um, he wrote a song, great song, that said, something's happening here, just what it is ain't exactly clear. Well, it's clear to me, it's clear to me that our planet's getting warmer. And it's clear to me that there are great challenges that poses for all of us. But inherent in those challenges are great opportunities as well. And the thing that we've got to do is seize those opportunities to seize the day. Thank you very much, Madam President.